What's up guys, Jay's Two Cents here, and I'm here with freaking Phil. It's weird, we're doing the same thing with our hands. That's what you naturally do on a table, No, right? No, well there's other things you can do on a table, but anyway. Um, did you guys know he's got a, a Twitch now? You guys should go follow it. It's at freaking Phil. That way... No. Yes. <laughs> it puts pressure on him. Anyway, we've got a little bit of distance going here, but if you're concerned about us being too close to each other, trust me, our contract trace is really easy to follow. Contract trace? Contract trace. Because we have no friends and we don't go anywhere. Pretty much. Fractal Design is proud to introduce their new Celsius Plus lineup of all-in-one CPU water coolers available in either Dynamic or Prisma. The tinted glass pump face reveals the LED backlight logo and ARGB LED effects while the smart auto control dynamically adjusts pump and fan speeds based on temperature for the perfect balance of silence and cooling performance. To see the full list of features and sizes available, head to the sponsored link in the description below. All right, so here we go. This is the third take of this video, only because Phil and I really like to talk, and I want this video to be concise. Under yet, five hours? Yeah. <laughs> I want to have a discussion in under 20 minutes, and that's hard for us. We're going to talk about Intel's new 10th gen processors. Um, the information launched today. We had the meeting with them a few days ago, but I didn't make a video for the 6 a.m. embargo because there's no point in the 6 a.m. launch. But it's interesting. A lot to talk about. Some things we have some questions about. And let's go ahead and get started. So let's just start at the top. 5.3 gigahertz? Up to asterisk. asterisk. <laughs> so let's just quickly talk about the spec of the new top tier mainstream processor. It's a Z490 chipset, brand new motherboard, new cutoff, no backwards compatibility starting here forward. So if you had a Z390 and you were hoping that this would work in that, or if you were hoping that you could get this CPU with an older motherboard, not gonna happen. Different chipset, different socket type, everything up to 5.3 gigahertz. It is a 10 core, 20 thread, up to 5.3 gigahertz, 125 watt TDP, that even has an asterisk of its own. <laughs> up to 40 PCIe lanes, again, something oh we had to God. discuss there. Yeah. All core turbo frequency of up to 4.8, and a boost of up to 4.9 of all core. Yeah. Oh, and it costs $488. There you go. Buy now, no, I'm kidding. I, I mean, I, for the same price of what the 9900K was, you're getting more. Yeah. I mean, there is that. All right, so let's back up. Let's let's talk about let's talk about Intel Turbo Boost and Thermal Velocity Boost. And we so, were, we're gonna be putting these slides up, obviously, on the yeah. screen. So you guys already know Turbo Boost. Basically, it's just like I can go faster than the base clock for a set amount of time. That's it. And then if we're not melting. Yeah, if we're not melting. But or the, I mean, you want to hit your we're base. Not, or we're, we're not pulling more power than the CPU is allowing unless you turn that off in the motherboard. Want to go below base clock if you're melting, melting. So, but anyway. Um, well, you're not going to turbo if you're melting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can. You can set it to. I live my life a uh, quarter hertz at a time. <laughs> um, okay, so. <laughs> Thermal velocity boost is an addition to the turbo boost technology that we're all familiar with. Basically, anytime you're under 70 degrees and you're within the turbo power window, you get the up to 5.3 gigahertz right. on two cores, the two favored cores on right. the 10T900. Now explain the favorite cores, right? That's two, that's that's GP Boost Technology 3.0. Yeah. So don't quote me on this because I don't know if they do it during binning or if it does it in software, but it basically picks the most the two most efficient cooler cores to run at the highest uh, speeds. So you hit that 5.3. On those two cores. On those two cores up to about 56 seconds. I think you said a non -tech. Yeah, the, the default the default uh, turbo boost uh, time is 60, like 56 seconds or something. So even if you're not melting, you're gonna drop down below that after that time limit. Yep, you're gonna Unless, drop down to 5.1, was it? Uh, uh, on, the, on the single, single core? Single core, yeah. yeah. No, 5.2. That same technology you just described though also applies to all core. Yes. Um, which is the all core max um, thermal velocity boost sig technology and all core turbo frequency of 4.9. Yes. So this is one of those things where water cooling kind of makes somewhat of a beneficial purchase again, because before we were like, oh, as long as you're under 105, you're fine, right? Yep. But now if you're under 70 and you haven't touched any of those overclocking settings, because you're the kind of person that would buy an overclocking CPU, but you're afraid to overclock it. But if you were doing that out of the box and it's a cold day, it's gonna ramp up to these for a little while anyway. Yeah. Um, it says thermal design power 125, but realistically it's more like, uh, it's max like 250. Up to 250-ish. Anantech uh, offered a estimate of 250 to 350, and then the motherboard manufacturers are pretty much corroborating that. So yeah. that's usually around where it's at anyway. So yeah, so that's going gonna, into discussion as to why they did the, yeah. why they added thermal velocity boost. This is great for gaming type workloads and really bursty workloads, which is pretty much most people's workloads. Like m most people don't hammer all the cores for a really long time. I do. 
Yeah, we yeah, that's all we do is like it's on board. <laughs> you're all just running Cinevenge while gaming for no reason. Why not? But, but it's like yeah, video rendering, CG rendering, those are really the only like yeah. and any other type of like really parallel workloads are the only times you're gonna fully load a processor. For the most part, it's like is a it, lot of this with <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Or that's you're just normal. playing, or you're just playing modern modern warfare. Oh whatever, I digress. Um, platform PCIe lanes. Uh, 3.0 3 lanes up to 40. And it says that for every SKU because that's going to be dependent on your motherboard. And we were like, what the heck, 40? Oh, it's up to, and then we realized platform. So we're thinking yeah. it's probably going to be. It's going to be whatever your, CPI, your CPU PCIe lanes are plus your, plus your PCH. I think it's a little curious that they don't list the CPU's PCIe lanes on this deck, but. It's probably going to be 16. Yeah, that's why we think it's probably going to be 16. I think it's going to be 16. Um, because I can't see them adding two more cores and allowing them to make it. 24 or whatever. Yeah, because if you think about Zen 2 and then suddenly having a billion PCIe lanes, it's yeah. because they redesigned their whole I.O. thing and it's on yeah. a separate die and all that. And this is, again, 14 nanometer plus, 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 asterisk. Dash S. Dash S, K, F. <laughs> it's literally a 900K with two more cores and the, the turbo boost, boost. 3.0 and velocity boost. Yep. There's basically four SKUs for the i9, but there's really only two. There's a K, a non-K, and then there's an F for each, which is just where they lop off the, um, the iGPU. Now the non-K does have a difference here. The, the K version has up to 3.7 base clock speed. The 900's up to 2.8. Now you lose 100 megahertz on the turbo frequency across the board. Um, you lose up to 300 megahertz on the all core and it's only up to 4.5 on the all core without velocity and turbo frequency uh, being considered. However, it's TDP is cut nearly in half at 65. And my hunch is that they can rate it at 65 because, because their of the base, base clock, clock is 2.8. Yep. Right. Okay, so moving on, the, 10, the i7 lineup is interesting. The 10700K, for all intents and purposes, with the exception of one additional technology that we can find, which is the Turbo Max Technology 3.0, because it doesn't have velocity boost, uh, it's a 9900K. Yeah. It is a rebranded 9900K for $374. So anyone that maybe ran out and bought a 9900K right now, I feel bad. Yeah. Because you paid. If you can return it and, and wait like one, what? The problem with it? CPUs, a lot of them have restocking fees. You yeah. Know? Um, but if you can return it, I would return it and try and get a 10700K just because you're gonna save 100, 100, at least $100. Provided you haven't like, Used you're it. not using the 9900K as an upgrade on a motherboard that supports it, because you're going to have to buy a new motherboard with a 10700K. Oh yeah, fair point. So. The only benefit we can really seem to find is that there's, it's the same turbo frequency, 4.7 all core, 8 core 16 thread, has the same up to 40 PCIe lanes. Now that, that's how we kind of deduced the 16X on CPU and then the rest on PCH, because we know the 9900K is 16, because yeah. it's on the ARC. Up to 3.8 base clock, up to 5.0 Intel Turbo Technology 2.0. The only thing it doesn't have is a velocity turbo boost. And then the, just like the 900 series, there's a non-K version and then an F version of both. So it looks like four SKUs, it's really only two. Whoa, check this out. The difference between iGPU price there is $25, but it's 16 on the i9. Okay, so this is my theory is that the F series is just all the processors that binned with, uh, the processor part binned correctly, and then the GPU part failed. I just think it's funny that when you lop off the same part, it's two different prices. I don't even, I, I could even be bad cop and say, I don't even think it's that. I just think it's greed. They want to keep that price as close to 500 as possible. Right, at the high end. But, yeah. No, yeah, that's a good point, because if you're already going to spend $477 in what end? Just spend 16 more and get yeah. more, which is my recommendation, actually. Get the get the K, not the KF, yeah. on any of these SKUs, because that internal, that iGPU is, very handy when troubleshooting. And also, if anything, if you're gonna be streaming, you can use the iGPU as an encoder, yeah. and then that way your GPU can just play Quick the game. Quick Yeah. So the 10600K though, this is the one I'm most excited to get my hands on. It kind of sucks, because I bet you Intel's not gonna send any reviewers that CPU, because I feel like this is gonna be potentially the sweet spot on, not the budget, but yeah. let's just say reasonable build uh, budgets. Yeah, six because cores. Not, it's six not core, 12 thread, where if you look at the 600 version now, the 9600, it's just six core, six thread. So you're getting hyper-threading. So that's another thing that, that changed with the 10 series. All of them have hyper-threading now. All of them, all the way down to the i3. Yeah. So you're getting double the threads at the same tier, right? It's $262. And this particular one though, if you're on a, if you're on, if you're really on a budget, I might recommend going with the KF, because like I said, it's $25 cheaper. $237, uh, six core, 12 yeah. thread, and it doesn't have Turbo Boost 3.0. It doesn't have 
thermal velocity boost. But at this point, I don't think it matters because it's not going to be a very hot part. Well, and it's a K-series, you know what I mean? Like these, turbo boost, like these turbo boost figures all go out the window as soon as you start manually overclocking. They so. go out the window the second you hook it up to an Asus motherboard because they like to just yeah, automatically yeah, if you turn enable, that cap on. If you, if you enable core enhancement. <laughs> Remember, there's two modes, disabled and auto. Yeah. But at $237, it's uh, up to 4.8 single core for the turbo boost 2.0. Yeah. Up to 4.5 all, all, all core. I bet you we can get that five gigs all core. I bet you. If not, at least 4.8. At least 4.8, which is fine, because the difference between 4.8 and 5.0, you're not going to really notice. Yeah, and six threads is still enough for most games right now. 12 threads. Sorry, I, 12 I threads. feel yeah, like that's right. plenty for you to just just set two cores, four threads to like your, your, your live stream. And we need to do a video about showing people how to set up Affinity and setting like dedicated chopped off CPUs to a live stream yeah. and then your GPU or to your games because you don't need a live stream computer these days. You don't need to have a second streaming computer. It's a waste of money. A lot of streamers are still advocating it. It's bullshit. And I'm gonna show why. And that's the difference between like streamers that are gamers and like, oh, I can build a computer and don't know what they're doing versus people who do know what they're doing. And I really wanna put a big fat nail in that coffin of people thinking that you need a live stream computer to get a good stream. But moving on, if we go all the way down here to the i3. i3 starts at the 10, 400, no, no, 10, 10320. <laughs> the 10320. It's a four core, eight thread. It's funny. Look at these specs. It's up to 3.8 base, up to 4.6 turbo, up to 4.4 all core, four core, eight thread. It's an i3 7700K. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. <laughs> for 150 bucks. For 150 bucks. Phil's looking up the specs on $150 3400G. Yeah, which, so which, has, mind, this which has, has um, Vega graphics in it. Yeah. Which you would never be able to really game with the UHD graphics 630. With Vega, at least you have a chance. So the, yeah, 3400G, it's base clock 3.7 gigahertz. 3.8 on the Intel. Max boost clock up to 4.2. 4.4. Okay, so on they all have frequency. A, oh no, 4.6 on the turbo boost, so two core, and then 4.4 all core. Oh right, and their max boost is single core, so single core 4.2. We know that none of those CPUs really go past 4.2 without a lot of work. Dang. That's gonna be a fun budget build. That's a tough I wanna choice. Do that. I'm gonna do that shootout. What would you do? Would you go AMD or would you go with the 10? I've gotta build both and see, I don't oh, yeah. know. I don't think those 200 megahertz on the Intel side are gonna- No, I don't really think they're gonna make it for the IPC. And we're still ignoring the fact that like it literally comes with a freaking 11 CU Vega unit. And then it, for the for the extreme budget builds, um, the only SKUs that don't have hyper threading are the Pentium series, and they've they've got a bunch of those now. Oh, no, I lied. The Pentiums do have hyper threading. Look, two core, four thread. It's the Celerons that don't have it. Oh, okay. So it's it's everything except the Celeron. I saw interesting thoughts on the 10900T. That's the same name. Remember the 1090T from Intel? Or yeah. AMD? Well, the T series is the. Oh yeah. Wait, what the. <laughs> That was AMD. Yeah, you're right, it was. That was the first Phenom. Well, Intel has an extra zero, so they're better. They're a zero better. <laughs> <laughs> the Illuminati reveal. Let's go ahead and wrap up this video about recommendations. One, you know as well as I do, just like AMD, just like Nvidia, we can't take their slides as gospel. We have to do independent testing. That's gonna be us, it's gonna be Linus, Paul, Kyle, and Anon Tech, Gamers Nexus, Hardware Canucks, all of us are gonna probably have fairly different opinions and results. If you want to know the truth, we all yeah. have different testing methodologies, we all have different ideologies. And you need to watch as many roundups as you can, watch as, read as many written articles, try and absorb as much information. I can't, I can't say right now which I would recommend. We started this conversation in a different take, and the problem is there's too many but if, but yeah. if, but if, on which you would go with. If you were just like, look, I got 500 bucks to spend on a CPU. And I I'm want the- Only gaming. Only Literally gaming. only gaming, and I want 240 FPS. And you can still live stream with that CPU, but yeah. you're not you're not working in a professional workspace yeah. or workflow. We know for a fact you're gonna get more FPS out of Intel than you're gonna get with AMD's current offerings at the same price point, at any price point to be honest, because we know clock speed is king when it comes to games yeah. right now. They're even advertising here up to 33% more FPS versus previous gen, asterisk number, or footnote two. 13% yeah. more in previous gen, asterisk four, or footnote four. There's too many different asterisks. The bottom line is. Wait, <laughs> mega tasking. I just Better what? mega tasking <laughs> versus a three-year-old PC, See, footnote AMD, nine. AMDs can only multitask. But look, here's the bottom line. We already know that today with a 2080 Ti, if you overclock a 9900K, which is already a fast CPU in terms of frequency, mm -hmm. you gain FPS when you overclock it. You gain FPS when you push the memory like we showed. Yep. So we know that this CPU being more cores, higher frequency with more cores is going to be faster. Yep. The question is whether or not, you know, that you're willing to trade off the 
mega tasking <laughs> gaming performance versus the better multi-threading performance of a 3900X at the same price point from AMD, which has 12 cores, 24 threads. My, my thing here though that is making this interesting is the gap between the eight core 16 thread 9900K and the 12 core 24 thread 3900X is now narrower yeah. with more clock speed. So we might see this edge out the AMD in some multi-threaded multi performance. That's gonna be interesting to test for sure. Well, G3950X, yeah, that's $250 more than these CPUs. That's $700 plus CPU, so yeah. that's irrelevant. But this also is only gonna be incentivized uh, to be purchased by someone looking to build a fully new system because zero backwards compatibility, you need a new motherboard mm -hmm. to go with the new CPUs. And it's kind of telling that they call it the world's fastest gaming processor. Because well, what else do they call it? Hold on. Elite Are, real world performance. Oh, elite in, real world performance. In Vietnam, and then it's Intel's fastest gaming processor in, in Argentina, Chile, Egypt, Japan, <laughs> Turkey. El Salvador, Russia. Guatemala, Honduras, Italy, Japan, Panama, Peru, Saudi Arabia, so Turkey, Russia. So typical of the US, they can say, oh, that's the world's fastest processor, just like how it's the... Um, well, yeah, it's the world's fastest processor in the US world. Yeah, <laughs> just like how it's the World Series. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> That's what we know. We're gonna obviously test these claims, see what we can come up with. And um, right now we can't give you a clear answer on what to buy because if you're looking at building a brand new system from scratch, Intel might have caught up to AMD with less cores, which is funny to say. For gaming, asterisk. For gaming, asterisk. <laughs> still on 14 nanometer. You know what, to be honest though, to, to wrap this up, I don't care what they call it. I don't care what process it is. I don't care what nanometer. I care about the end of the day, what performance I get. Mm. Only, only the super tech gurus care about like what's under the hood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I care. It's all about the quarter mile time, guys. Who cares how you get there? Slingshot me across the line for all I care. And I touched like, your knee. Oh no, I touched uh, your knee. Ah.